instruction. Nehemiah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the tower of the hundreds and consecrated it. Then as far as the tower of Hananel. Next to Eliashib, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zakur, the son of Imri, built. As we continue in the book of Nehemiah and follow Nehemiah's journey towards fulfilling that vision that God had put in his heart, we come to the construction phase where uh, after having got the commitment of the people, now they move into actually rebuilding the walls of the city. Uh, and we see this in the third chapter of Nehemiah. Uh, we see something really important in it, and I will just summarize the key things we see in chapters 3, 4, and 5. In chapter 3, we see careful organization. In chapter 4, we see genuine cooperation. And in chapter 5, we see exemplary leadership. So there's a Nehemiah carefully organizes the people as they come to work. We see that different sections of the wall are assigned to different people and they are very clear about what they have to do, uh, the task that is set before them and they, the work that they have to accomplish. So there is clear organization of the work, careful organization of the work uh, in the rebuilding of the walls. The second thing we see this in chapter 4 uh, is that there is genuine cooperation among the people. Uh, there is what we would typically call as great teamwork. You know, there are the priests, there are the Levites, there are the goldsmiths, there are various uh, kinds of people who participate in the work of rebuilding the walls. And um, also as uh, they begin to face some uh, opposition from uh, people, uh, they stand together. Uh, it's remarkable to see how uh, when some of the people are at work constructing the walls, there are others who are standing there uh, to guard their backs, so to speak, to stand there and to protect them. And there are others who are, who are standing there with, as watchmen over uh, the walls to look out uh, for any kind of enemy intrusion. So there is great teamwork that's happening there in chapter 4. And in chapter 5, we see Nehemiah's exemplary leadership. When he recognizes that the money lenders are oppressing the people, he calls them to task. He tells them to stop oppressing them. And in his own life as a leader, for 12 years, he, he reports that uh, he, as, as a governor over there in, in Judah, he refuses uh, or he denies himself luxuries that he could have afforded um, at the expense of the state. He, um, he chooses not to eat of the governor's provisions uh, and he chooses not to put any kind of heavy bondage on the people. So we see exemplary leadership. So during the construction phase, that is when God is causing your vision to come forth, uh, to take shape, and when you're actually seeing the vision being built before your very eyes, remember these three important things. There's got to be careful organization, there has got to be genuine cooperation or teamwork, and there's got to be exemplary leadership. You as a leader got to set the example, got to set the standards, and got to have influence on the people through the life you yourself live before them. And that will cause the, a great work to be built. Let's pray together and ask God that we will be able to put these into uh, practice in our areas of influence. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the insights we could draw from uh, Nehemiah's life. We ask for your wisdom, God, upon us, that we will organize carefully. Uh, we will ensure genuine cooperation. And God, our lives themselves, our life itself will be exemplary, God, so that people will, together we can build what you've called us to build. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.